surgical visceral fat removal in rats extends median and maximal lifespan. And that's what we'll see here. On the y-axis, we've got percent survival plotted against age. And in terms of median survival, we put up a line at 50% survival. This is the time when half of the rats had died and half were still alive. And for maximum survival, we put a line at 20% survival. At this time point, 80% of the rats had died and only 20% were still alive. And then for rats who had their visceral fat removed at a very young age, at five months of age, we can see significant extensions for median and maximal lifespan. So with that in mind, which interventions reduce visceral fat? And one intervention is calorie restriction, which is well known to reduce visceral fat. And if you missed that data, I showed it in an earlier video, it'll be in the right corner. So in terms of lifespan for calorie restriction, that was also explored in this study. And we can see that calorie restriction, 40% CR, further pushed median and maximal lifespan out further. Now, it's important to note that visceral fat is reduced on a calorie restricted diet. And we're considering that the lifespan extension for the visceral fat removal rats, the, the rats that had visceral fat surgically removed, was about 20% relative to controls, that suggests that about 20% of the lifespan extending effect of calorie restriction comes from keeping visceral fat relatively low. So note that these data are in rats though. Would it translate to people? And if it does, which factors are correlated with lower visceral fat in people? Now one factor is BMI, as a higher BMI is associated with higher levels of visceral fat. And again, these data are in people, which is what we'll see here. So on the y-axis, we've got VFM in grams. This is visceral fat mass plotted against BMI. And for both men and women, we can see that as BMI increases, starting from around 20, we can see that visceral fat, or that's associated with an increase for visceral fat. So in terms of what's optimal for visceral fat in men and women, using BMI, its association with BMI, it's a BMI in the 20 to 21 range is associated with lowest the lowest levels of visceral fat. But B, BMI is a gross measure of body composition. So fortunately, in this study, they looked at body fat percentage, and they used DEXA, which is an important measure. It's, it's important to mention that they used DEXA. This wasn't an estimate using uh, a body size, you know, so waist to hip circumference or, or different measure. They used specifically DEXA, which is uh, as close to accurate as one can get for measuring visceral fat. So in this study, they saw that a higher body fat percentage is associated with higher levels of visceral fat, which is what we'll see here. So now here too, we've got visceral fat mass on the y-axis, but instead plotted against body fat percentage. So for men, we can see that as body fat percentage increases, starting from about 10% body fat, visceral fat mass increases. And for women, the data isn't as continuous. So in the low, uh, high teens, low 20s, visceral fat actually declines by a small amount. But then we can see that visceral fat mass increases for women that have a BMI greater than about 22%. So in terms of what's optimal in association with body fat percentage in both men and women, for men in the 10 to 13% body fat range that was associated with the lowest visceral fat mass in this study, and for women, it was in the 19 to 22% range. So this is a biohacking focused channel, so what's my data? And to evaluate that, I used DEXA, two years in a row on the same machine. And that's what we'll see here with visceral fat mass in the right-hand column. So in December of 2023, visceral fat mass was 0.58 pounds, which is 263 grams, and we'll see why that conversion is important in a minute. And then in 2024, it looks like I measured two separate times, but it's actually on the same day. So just how good is DEXA? How reliable is it test to test? How precise is it for measuring visceral fat laying in exactly the same position two scans in a row? And unfortunately, we can see that there is some variability. For the first test, it was 0.8 pounds. And for the second test, immediately right after, I didn't go anywhere, I just laid in the same position, it was 0.59 pounds, which is a 30, 36% difference. Now, before going deeper into that story, note that I earlier showed associations for BMI and body fat percentage. So how do those data relate to the visceral fat mass on these two different test dates? So my BMI for the December 2023 test was 22.2 and almost exactly identical for the December 2024 test of 22.3.
In terms of body fat percentage, it was 14% for the 2023 test and a bit higher for the year after, 15.7% on the first scan and 15.2% on the second scan. Note that the variability in whole body body fat percentage, test to test, laying in the same position, is very low relative to the uh, 36% that was uh, different test to test for visceral fat. So DEXA is much more precise at evaluating whole body uh, fat mass and correspondingly body fat percentage. And at least for the December 2024 test, there was a lot of variability for its visceral fat mass evaluation. Now, unfortunately, I didn't measure in 2023 two tests back to back, but hopefully I can convince the DEXA tech for next year's test to again repeat, uh, test it, you know, do two tests in a row, and then I can take the average. So average visceral fat mass over those two 2024 tests is 0.7 pounds, which equals 306, uh, 316 grams. So how does visceral fat equal to 316 grams compare with age expected data? And that's what we'll see here. And this is data for men. Uh, visceral fat mass data for women was covered in an earlier video. And if you want to check that out, I'll link to it in the right corner. So based on my chronological age, aver uh, the median visceral fat mass, I was going to say average, but average should be pretty close to the median. So median uh, visceral fat mass for my chronological age of 52 would be around 1300 grams. Whereas in contrast, I'm close to the lowest for my chronological age. And in fact, that would be the median value of a 20 to 30 year old. So this is good news as 316 grams is below the age expected chronological age, CA median for visceral fat mass. And in terms of the longevity goal, it's to avoid an age related increase for visceral fat. Now you could say in 2023, it was 263 grams and it's an average of 316 grams in 2024. So already it's gone in the wrong direction. But considering that there is some test to test variability, for DEXA measuring visceral fat mass, as you can see, it was actually 0.59, which isn't too far from 0.58 in 2023 versus 2024. So it's uncertain if it actually increased for now, but I'm planning on measuring uh, this at least once per year going forward every year at about the same time, December of each year. So we'll see how this story plays out as again, the goal is to keep visceral fat mass as low as possible with the goal of maximizing longevity. That's all for now. If you're interested in more besides what's optimal for visceral fat, I recently released a 95 minute video that's exclusively on Patreon that covers what's optimal for biomarkers for all the biomarkers shown here. Now, these days, anybody can you know, ask uh, AI or LLMs, ChatGPT or your LLM of choice, what's optimal for biomarkers. But from my experience, they don't dive deep into the weeds like I have. So if you're interested in checking that out, this is a new Patreon tier. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount and affiliate links that you can use while testing yourself that help to support the channel, including ultalabtest.com, which is where I get the majority of my blood tests, the clearly filtered, a clearly filtered water filter, which I have and I use. And I should mention all of these discount links or affiliates I'm actively using or have recently used, at-home metabolomics with Iolo, oral microbiome composition, NED testing with Genfinity, epigenetic testing, at home blood testing with SciFox Health, which includes ApoB, but also Grimage, Green Tea, Diet Tracking with Chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me a Coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Tracking brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.